Um, okay, so some of the uh, interesting points, cargo stored on deck, unless they are uh, um, with the cons I mean, stored on deck with the consent of the um, shipper, in which case they are covered fuel. It is general average only. I mean, we're talking about goods that were sacrificed. Okay. Will they be um, compensated and will they be covered by general average? General average, if there is ample supply of fuel. If there is no ample supply, if you if you throw them away, you will put the ship and the cargoes in danger. So that's why another rule applies. It's not general average. Although, as I said, be careful with your conclusion because liability may be based on some other provisions like the new civil code. Okay. 817, um, because... When you speak of general average, normally you're talking, I mean, problems always or most often than not involves jettison, unloading, I mean, deliberate sacrifice of cargo. But there are exceptions. There are instances when there's no jettison and yet there is general average. And you have these articles 817 to... Um, uh, and 818. When, when a vessel will enter a port and there is a danger because of a storm and there it's necessary to lighten the vessel and you lighten the vessel by transferring cargoes to a lighter or a barge, any damage which resulted will be considered as a general average loss under Article 817 of the Code of Commerce. Uh, 818 is, the, is a situation where there is a fire in the port. There are vessels in the port, and in order to save other vessels, you sink one. You sink one or, I mean, one or more vessels, the sinking of those vessels or the loss to those vessels will be considered general average loss for which others would share in the, in the loss by way of in, in proportion to their um, respective properties. So the sinking is another example. Article 818 is another example of a general average loss which does not involve jettison. There are others. Take note, it's in reviewers in the civil code. Take note of the examples under the code of commerce. There is a numeration of general average and a numeration of simple average under the code of commerce. But please remember that they are just examples. Specific situations identified in the code of commerce are not exclusive lists of uh, cases of general average as or simple average. You have to go, that's why you have to go by the requisites. There might be situations not included in numeration but may be included because all the requisites are present. So let me remind you again, please remember the requisites. Okay. In collision, um, for if, if the examiner is a practitioner, there are only two significant points to remember because all other rules are covered by um, treaty convention. We have not yet... Um, Acceded. The Philippines has not yet acceded to a treaty known as Col Regs, Collision Regulation. I mean, it's a, a treaty. But that, that treaty is being followed because it is custom. 
especially in international um, voyage, uh, it is the treaty, COLREX, that, that is being um, implemented by sea captains in case of collision. But, as I said, there are two points to consider. If Article 827 and the doctrine of inscrutable fault, if you know that both vessels or were negligent, meaning the captains of both vessels were negligent, each must suffer his own loss. Okay? That is why the doctrine of the last clear chance and contributory negligence are not applicable. If, if the doctrine of the last clear chance is applicable, one sea captain might argue that although he was negligent, the other ship cast, uh, the other vessel has the last clear chance of avoiding injury. Uh, this is one way of determining the proximate cause of the loss. Uh, uh, you can approach this by under the rubric of intervening cause, efficient intervening cause. The negligence of the other is the efficient intervening cause. He has the last clear chance of avoiding injury. So under the civil law concept, quasi deli, um, one may escape liability because of this. But that is not true in collision under the Code of Commerce. Whether the other has the last clear chance or not is not material. So long as you can prove that both vessels are negligent or were negligent, they will shoulder their own law. They will bear their own losses. Okay. And that is also the reason why, according to the Supreme Court, the contributory negligence rule will not apply. You will not determine... So you know that both were negligent. You cannot argue that one is the proximate cause, one is just contributory. You cannot argue that way. Because the moment you prove, even if under civil law, the negligence of the other might have been classified as contributory in civil law, but the rule is different. Whether it's, so it is supposed to be contributory or not is not material. The presence of negligence on the part of both parties under Article 827 will make them bear their own loss. Okay? So... There are at least two cases involving that. Doctrine of inscrutable fault. If you know that there is fault or negligence, you don't know who was responsible or who was among them negligent. It's some, something similar to, uh, well, it may be a situation where there may, I mean, you can say that res ipsa, you know that the collision would not have occurred if somebody was not negligent. So you know that somebody was ne not negligent. Di mo lang alam yung nangyari talaga. You don't know who. So under this doctrine, each must suffer his own loss. Okay. So this was asked several times, this doctrine of inscrutable fault in Article 827. Okay. So that's all that I can recommend you to study as far as collision is concerned. Well, salvage, again, the, um, if it is contractual, then you follow the contract. Whatever is provided as compensation, then what... It, you should follow the, the contractual provisions. But the salvage law governs voluntary salvage, meaning nobody asks him to, pero nakialam siya, isinalvage niya yung, yung vessel. Okay? So, this, you have the requisites. Marine peril, there must be a derelict, meaning the vessel was shipwrecked, it must be voluntarily rendered and there must be success, meaning 
if the ship remains under the sea, there will be no compensation. Since this is something voluntary, it is a compensation for a successful recovery. Okay. So, it's, um, it's the requisites again that I think should be remembered here. Well, let's wait for the others to finish.